Come on. Right. Yeah. Hey. <clears throat> I was a jerk. Okay. So I will I will pay you what I owe you plus interest if you just let me come through. I suggest you find parking somewhere else. Somewhere else? As in where somewhere else? Not my concern. Uh, actually, uh, this is your job, so by definition, it's your concern. So pump out the ticket and open the stupid gate already, please. I, mean, I don't have time for this. I don't think you want to be doing that. Oh, yeah? What are you going to do? You got a poop-filled diaper in there? You going to throw it at me? You going to gum me to that, huh, geezer? Oh, 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 We're talking about a family. Mom, dad, two kids. Lawyer's got this bullshit theory about them staging this right off with the money. You know the story? Yeah, a county treasurer on bezel funds. I read the paper. Oh, man, well, we got this gangbanger dead to rights. Only problem is your guy over there. He needs to help us get his scumbag client to talk. So what do you say? You on board? Help us do some good. Sure. OK, here's the deal. You assaulted this man. Give me a break. I barely touched the guy. But you laid hands on him first. Finger. I laid finger on him. Well, whatever your interpretation, it was still an assault. Now, this gentleman is willing to let this go, not press charges, if you help us out. You got to get your client to tell us where he has the family stashed. Like, guys, I'm the definition of a broken record on this one. Nacho is Nacho man. Comprendo? Nobody took the Kettlemans. The Kettlemans took themselves. You're going to keep playing that line? It's going to go rough. You know what? Do your worst. All right, let's go to booking. Yeah, sure. Fine. Perfect end to a perfect hey, day. Guys, wait a second. I changed my mind. I'm sorry, what? I don't want to press charges. We talked about this. You want to press charges. No. No, I don't. What are you doing, buddy? I thought you had our backs. No, I don't think I said that, buddy. So what, you get a chance to do the right thing and you puss out? Mm, yeah. Well, I guess it's my loss. Hey, Cagney, Lacey, when you realize how wrong you are about all this, I'll take an edible arrangement as a sorry, heavy on the pineapple. Hey, hold up. How come you let me off the hook back there? I'm going back to work. Why don't you quit while you're ahead and go on your way? No, I refuse to believe it's because you have something resembling a heart inside your body. You're not going to have a heart inside your body in about five seconds. Okay, don't tell me, all right? I already know why you did it. Yeah? Why is that? Because you believe me. That family kidnapped themselves. <laughs> all right, I believe you. I knew it! I knew it! Finally, someone believes me! <laughs> Why do you believe me? I heard the details. Your story makes sense. Of course it does. Devil's advocate, like the cops said, uh, the Kettleman's cars are still at their house. There's no record of them leaving. How, how'd they get out of the country? They didn't. Odds are they didn't get out of the neighborhood. Would, would they come again? Look, when I was still on the job back in Philly, we had this case. Oh, hold up, hold up. Now wait. On the job, as in you were a cop on the job? This bookie disappeared after the Super Bowl. Cowboys, Steelers, took six million dollars in bets and skipped town when things didn't go his way. Now, everybody thought he was on the beach in the Bahamas or dead in the Jersey Pine Barrens. Wasn't the case. He was two doors down from where he lived in a foreclosed house, hid there for six months without anyone suspecting. But, but why? Why not run? Now, that's what everybody expects. It's human nature to want to stay close to home. And if this Kettleman figured out how to do it, that's what he did. Nobody wants to leave home. 